We also participants of ICOMS 2017 to share their best surgical tips and tricks with you, their colleagues. There's no science or research. These are tips and tricks in our daily practice. We received more than 30 tips and tricks for all over the world after a pre-selection by a professional jury. We're very proud to share the best tips and tricks with you today. So notice that this is a competition and the winner of the best tip and trick will receive a beautiful award, which you will see there, the glass ball, and a thousand dollar cash reward. So there is something at stake. We have five members of the jury and all of them are young colleagues from all over the world. And they will decide who has the best tip or trick. They will each judge the impact, originality, and significance of the tip or trick. And Dr. Deepak Krishnan will chair this jury. The amount of points each tip or trick will get decides who will be the winner. Of course, we wish all the tip and trick presenters good luck and hope for you that you can use some of these tips and tricks in daily practice. I would like to welcome our first tip and trick presenter, Dr. Michael Abba from Israel. Please give him a warm welcome. So good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. Luis, I have only, only three minutes, but I will take my time, as you said. <laughs> OK. So uh, I am Dr. Michael Abba. I am from the oral and maxillofacial uh, surgery department in uh, Ashkelon, Israel. And I work under Professor uh, Oded Nachlieli, who is uh, also the head of the department. We do minimal invasive surgery. And uh, we are uh, leading in the field of uh, salivary gland surgery. And I would say also in creativity. Uh, so yeah, this is the first slide. And we can move to uh, this one. And as you probably know, Israel is uh, leading in uh, high-tech development and creativity. And um, we have a special device we developed. And this is the first launch, worldwide launch of this device. So I'm very, very proud to show you this, this device. So we have the problem. We perform surgery of the uh, floor of the mouse, and we have the tongue there. The tongue is really a disruptive uh, organ that we cannot uh, move. We have all sorts of conventional retractors. They have all sorts of uh, uh, advantage and disadvantages. And we felt the need to have something that is custom made, creative, so we can use for our users. And now I will show you uh, this device. And uh, please watch the movie. Tonight you fly so high up in the vanilla sky. Your life is fine, it's sweet and sour, unbearable or great. This is your day. Okay, so this is the spoon tug retractor. We use it uh, as a, a retractor that you that is really adaptable to the tongue and it performs a really good uh, retraction of the tongue. We can perform our surgeries, uh, as you can see. And this is a, a device that was developed in our uh, department. <laughs> we even use this device when it's used as a spoon in order to retract the globe. And I really, uh, it is really one of the best retractors we have been uh, using. Uh, it anat anatomically adapts also the globe, and today this is a part <laughs> of all, all our surgical <laughs> devices. Thank you. Okay, so now another uh, small thing before I uh, step off this, uh, this uh, stage. Stefan, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit late. Before uh, stepping up, my boss came to me and uh, told me, uh, listen, Michael, if you don't get the 1,000 bucks, you don't have a place to go back. You stay in Hong Kong. <laughs> so take this in consideration. 
So thank you. thank you, Dr. Abba, for this ingenious instrument. Dr. Can we Abba? have the clicker back? The clicker. That would be very nice. Yeah. You'll get you'll get something, no worries. Thanks so much. <laughs> What an ingenious instrument. Everybody should have this. This is amazing. We are very curious to hear the story of our second Dexit speaker. She's going to lift us up and see the world from a different point of view. Please welcome Dr. Jocelyn Shand. And he sang as he shoved that jump back in his tucker bag. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me And he sang as he shoved that jump back in his tucker bag You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me Good afternoon. This afternoon I'd like to share some of the talents and the achievements from people from Oceania. What you have to remember about Oceania is that we occupy an exclusive and distinct part of the globe. In 1930, it took six weeks by boat to travel between Australia and England, and it still does today. That's just for retirees. In 1930, it took almost two weeks by plane with stop and starting, but now we can get there in a day. We have punched well beyond a weight for innovators, for experiments, for inventions. Why? Because we're geographically isolated. <laughs> we have to be resourceful, we have to have ingenuity, imaginative ideas and persistence. These are some of the game changers you may not know came from Australasia. The most recent of these is the telomere and the telomerase discovery by Elizabeth Blackburn, for which she was awarded a Nobel Prize. All of these people are giants in their field. They all deserve to be called giants. I'm going to select a few from our region to give you an overview, and the first comes from amongst this group that you can see. This is the first person from New Zealand to ever be awarded a Nobel Prize. Sir Ernest Rutherford is known as the father of nuclear physics. He discovered the concept of radioactive half-life. And the magnitude of his discoveries was reflected that when he died, he was interned at Westminster Abbey along with the other greatest scientists in the world. This man's also from New Zealand. He's the third man working in the area of DNA and X-ray diffraction. He, along with James Watson and Francis Crick, was awarded a Nobel Prize for the discovery of the double helix. An iconic surgeon. Born in Dunedin, New Zealand, which is my hometown, he's an ENT surgeon who would become the father of plastic surgery. He worked through two world wars, and during World War I, he focused on facial injuries. He developed and helped to create craniofacial surgery. He attempted the first Lefort III, and that technique was taken by Paul Tessier and refined. Sir Harold Gillies had a cousin. He was also from Dunedin, and he became a plastic surgeon. Sir so Archibald Mackendoe revolutionised the care of facial injuries and burns during World War II. The soldiers that he cared for at the Queen Victoria Hospital knew that they had a pioneer, and they called themselves the guinea pigs, and they established the renowned guinea pig club. This man has saved millions of lives, and he continues to do so today. Professor Howard Florey followed in the footsteps of Sir Alexander Fleming. Fleming discovered the mould that had antibacterial properties, but it was Florey who took that and created the first 
medically usable form of the drug we call penicillin. The world's most famous beekeeper. In 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenze Norgay summited Everest. Sir Edmund would be the first person to reach the South Pole, the North Pole, and to cross Antarctica by land. He formed the Himalayan Trust, and he helped for the remainder of his life the Sherpa people of Nepal. Time magazine described him as one of the most influential people of the 20th century and listed him in the top 100. This is the first Australian to ever wear, win a Nobel Prize. Mafalan Burnett was a virologist and immunologist. The contribution he made to colonial selection therapy for immunology is reflected that 50 years after his publication, Nature Journal recognised his work and he provided the intellectual framework that revolutionised immunology and moved it forward. A familiar figure. Born in New Zealand, he worked in New Zealand, Adelaide and ultimately England. He looked at facial disorders and helped to un our understanding of these. David Poswillow ultimately ended as a Hunterian professor. This man worked in an age before mini plate fixation and before seatbelt laws. He worked at the Royal Melbourne Hospital in Melbourne. He created the Levant Frame, which improved the care of patients with mid facial injuries. It removed the plaster cap and it allowed forward and downward traction of these injured patients. Also at the Royal Melbourne is a very familiar figure. Bob Cook worked with Hubo of Begeza and in 1960s he returned from Zurich and introduced orthognathic surgery to Australia. Graham Clark, an ENT surgeon, created the cochlear implant and restored hearing to thousands of people. This is the only veterinary surgeon in the world who's ever received a Nobel Prize. It was for his work in immunology and specificity of cell-mediated immune defense. This time, a gastroenterologist and a pathologist, they altered the treatment of peptic ulcer disease when they discovered H. pylori bacteria. This man is the first man to create a vaccine against cancer. Ian Fraser, working with HPV, developed a vaccine against cervical cancer. Rui Fernandez, in his presidential lecture this morning, outlined the importance of recognising those people who were influential in his specialty area in the US. These are our four. These are the people who pioneered pushed the boundaries, fought and changed the face of oral and maxillofacial surgery in Australasia. I end with the thoughts of two extraordinary individuals, born in different centuries. They both recognised the importance of looking backwards at the pioneers in order for us to move forward. From Oceania, thank you. Thank you very much for such an inspiring and historical lecture, Dr. Chan. Now it's time for us to enjoy another talent that your colleagues possess. You, it's time for some music. You may have noticed them playing while you were entering the hall, or they got just some of them relaxed just sitting on the chairs when the other ones were playing. They come from Germany, Israel, Turkey, the Netherlands, Japan, Spain, and Belgium. And they're here to entertain you with their talent. So we are very proud to present our very first international ICOMS band. And thank the KLS Martin Group, and especially Christian Leibinger and Oliver Schoenemann 
for all their great support. And please, ladies and gentlemen, notice that they all have a beautiful bow tie in which, which, with which they support the AOMS. So, ladies and gentlemen, isn't she lovely?
So, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't that lovely? They were so enthusiastic, they just didn't want to stop. It was unbelievable.